Hello everybody, this is Paolo Chikiamka here. I'm Borj Sinaban and we're the creators of Folk. Hey, uh, for me, Folk is about the way music can give a voice to the voiceless. It's um, about how music can give courage and it's how it can move people, whether this be moving them onto the streets for a protest or moving them to have the courage to share a room with singing monsters. Uh, this is something that I think I wanted folk to, well, we wanted folk to, to embody. For me, um, folk is a modern fantasy fable in the importance of learning to accept your own voice. And, uh, and it's about one's responsibility to hear out one another, no matter who or where they came from. Well, I'm always on the lookout for projects that focus on Southeast Asia, especially comic projects that do the same. Um, and Singapore is, has a special place in my heart. I've been there often and I've made a lot of friends in the comics and SF scene there and when I heard about sound from one of them I decided that if I had a story that could fit and if I had um, if Borge was also available that we would try our luck and how it went. Right. For me I got inspired because of Paolo's script. <laughs> It's very good and how the story relates to our relates to our daily lives. Well the theme of the anthology that was given to us was sound. And we were supposed to think about a sound that sort of encapsulates or represents our home. And for me, the sound one of the sounds I associate the most with Manila is the sound of protest. Uh, we were raised with the idea that protest was the way that we hold the government accountable to its people and I participated in several myself and I always felt that protests here have a deep link with music when I think of the people power revolution. There is a soundtrack that plays in my mind. Um, there is a way here that we use music to give us courage when we face up against institutions or big, gigantic opponents. And that's why I wanted our story for sound to encapsulate that relation between music and protest here. And at the same time, I also wanted to inject elements of our folklore, which is something I try to do whenever I have the opportunity in the story. Well, I'm a city boy, so I didn't really get a lot of um, exposure to them from stories, relatives, or from uh, my friends. We, I did watch a lot of pop culture and that's where I got most of my exposure to them. However, at the time, most pop culture representations of our folklore creatures were fairly shallow. We take the form of the creature because it's scary, but not really go into the mythology behind it, not really go into the world building aspects that I always found to be the most interesting part. But later on, we um, there was a comic book published called Mythology Class, and through that, I was able to learn about the richness of the source material and how it could be used in the kind of media that I love to read. So since then, I made it a point to learn more about uh, our folklore creatures and to use them whenever I could in stories that would put new twists to their basic concepts in a way that builds on what was already there in the oral traditions and hopefully leads people to be more interested in that source material as well. For me, as a Filipino kid growing up, um, these creatures have always been present all throughout my childhood. From, the, from different types of pop media like books, local films, radio dramas, to folk stories told by my grandparents. But like Paolo said, um, these um, representations are just um, shallow forms of their um, um, mythology. So um, we'd like to um, build from this and um, 
create more stories with twists that um, inform the readers about these um, mythological features more. Well, I'd like to say that it gave me an excuse to do karaoke for research, but uh, I didn't really, I wasn't really able to justify it that way since I already have a lot of experience with karaoke. Um, I also have a lot of prior knowledge regarding the folklore features since I do tend to use them a lot in my fiction and my work. What I did focus on this for this project, however, was the various techniques that comics creators have used in order to portray the idea and the feeling of sound in their comic. Comics being an entirely silent medium, it's one of the most fascinating magic tricks when a creator can make you experience sound just simply by looking at a panel or by reading a certain word. And uh, not all of these techniques saw use in folk in the end, but I did learn a lot about those techniques while researching for this comic. So for me, I researched, researched about um, Filipino ethnical musical instruments, and I kind of revamped some of the designs to incorporate a, fa a more fantastical look for the folk characters, as well as um, um, put my um, own interpretation for a more unique and fresh um, design for our readers. George and I have worked together a lot in the past, so we already have a sort of routine. Basically what happens is I come up with a concept, I run it by board, we go back and forth. When we've agreed more or less on the concept itself, I'll break it down into an outline, send it in for comments, turn that into a page-by-page -page script. Uh, usually I also send some visual examples for um, certain kinds of panels or certain kind of kinds of moods or techniques I want him to consider using. But I know that when it comes to the visual side of things that he always would have, I'd always defer to him. And after the full script is in his hands, Borge will make the thumbnails, he'll send it to me, we'll back and forth a little, and then after that, Borge just works his magic and voila, a new masterpiece. Okay, so for me, the transfer from script to page is the most interesting part of the whole process. Um, this usually takes me about a day or so. So the thumbnails and the, the whole um, sketches is the most interesting part because it, um, it entails you to um, think outside of the box on how the story will flow and how will you translate the the words of the script to an actual um, image. But then after that, while um, inking and the actual line work is the most taxing for me because you have to be um, detail-oriented and you have to um, be very uh, uh, um, on the lookout for um, um, inconsistencies on the line work. So, the actual um, lines and the actual um, inking is the most um, difficult part for me, but that's in the whole process of creating comics. <laughs> Before this, um, Paula and I worked on an indie comic titled Muros. So in Muros, there are also um, Filipino um, creatures that I've designed as well. So that's another. I, I've used the some of the designs from there. I, another um, interesting influence is Studio Ghibli films. I tried to create recreate the feeling of um, sense of the sense of wonder in my uh, feature designs, and I also um, was influenced by uh, Daisuke Igarashi's. Uh, Children of the Sea uh, manga. Borg and I are regular partners in crime. We first worked together. Uh, wow, it's almost been uh, a decade now. Right? Maybe nine years ago was when we um, first worked together one of the stories of our Myth Space anthology. 
since then we've done other uh, together. Uh, we've done Muros, which is sort of a urban fantasy comic. We've also done some commercial work together, so we're we're quite used to each other. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, we're we're probably gonna keep working together in the future for so long as boards will have. <laughs> of course, uh, I'll always have Paolo to thank for in inspiring and creating these stories that uh, that really moves me and create. Um, these um, characters that I really um, have a soft spot to. So, as long as Paulus creating his own thing, I'll always be here to support and draw his worlds and make it live out in the page. Personally, I think it's important for Southeast Asian creators to create, period. Uh, I don't think that they should be constrained or even encouraged to write about any particular thing. What matters is that they create. Um, if you are from Southeast Asia, then create story inspired by or have elements of home will inevitably find their way into your work. Uh, but I don't think that we want to lim put limits on us that are not on other creators. If they can play in their playground, in our playgrounds, in our culture, we can play in there. There's no, there should be no uh, question about that. Um, definitely, yes. Our cultures are very rich and unique, and our own voices should and should be heard as well. So, like Paula said, um, it's um, it's our, in our own. Um, we can tell our own stories in their playground or we can have it here on our own and that's the beauty of it. I think we already have a lot of creators making their own stories. What I think would be most helpful for the regional scene at the moment would be for other aspects necessary for the creation of an industry to be um, to come over or to be created here. Uh, what do I mean by that? I mean, um, like the logistical aspects, I mean, the, the infrastructure. Uh, I would say that to have more publishers putting out the stories, more platforms available to submit to, more coverage, more dedicated coverage from um, Southeast Asian comics center journalists or publications, more criticism. All these things that go into making an industry vibrant that are tangential to but just as important in their own way as the stories themselves, those are the things which I think would make the most impact if they were to arrive on the regional scene. Thank you for staying with us. We hope to see you around next time too. Bye.